Oh boy, today we got some really good news or really bad news depending on who you are. And that is that there was a big leak having to do with iOS and iPhone. Specifically, there was a big leak of the source code of the iBoot and BootROM code for iOS. Basically, that's the code that is first launched when you boot up an iPhone, and that's the stuff that verifies things like the operating system running, the kernel, just stuff that is very essential to security with the iPhone and running the software on it. So this has a lot of implications that we can talk about having to do with jailbreaking, security of the iPhone, and exploits and all that kind of stuff so we can get into the, all that today. So this source code was actually leaked onto GitHub, which is a website you may be familiar with it where programmers and really anyone can post source code for their own programs, but it turns out someone used it to leak Apple's source code, and it supposedly has been verified by a lot of security researchers. They say they believe it's real, and Apple actually did file a DMCA takedown notice on the code, which does suggest that it was legit, otherwise they wouldn't have bothered with it. Like I mentioned, the two main components that were leaked were the boot ROM, which is the very first thing that's loaded. It's actually read only, and you really can't modify this, but the source code is now available. And then iBoot, which is loaded a little bit just after that, and is used to verify and sign a bunch of different stuff as well. And if you don't really know what all of that means, to give you an idea, Apple does have a bug bounty program where they offer security researchers rewards for finding vulnerabilities in different parts of the iOS program. And the secure enclave, which is what houses the iBoot and BootROM software, has the highest reward at $200,000 per vulnerability up to that. So you can kind of see that this is a big deal that they release the entire source code because now, well, all the vulnerabilities are gonna be laid out in front of anyone who knows what they're looking for. So to kind of give an example of why the source code being leaked is such a huge deal, we can use a metaphor example. Say you wanna break into a bank or something and get all the money out of it or whatever. Now, banks obviously have a ton of security. They got cameras all over the place. They got the vault. They have keys and locks and everything you would need to secure a bank. So if you wanted to sneak in there and check out any vulnerabilities, you would be restricted to seeing anything that's external, public. You'd have to walk into the lobby and look around there. You'd have to look at what cameras are visible. You might even be able to look at what kind of locks they're using. And maybe if you're really lucky, you can steal a key off a desk or something to use later. But for the most part, you can't really get any backdoor access and see what's going on behind the scenes to really exploit anything. Now, getting your hands on the source code, however, is basically the equivalent of getting access to the blueprints of the entire building, getting a map and location of all the cameras, whether they're hidden or public, as well as figuring out how the whole computer system is set up, and even figuring out the specifications for how every single lock is made. It doesn't mean that you can just walk in and open everything. It doesn't give you the keys necessarily, but it allows you to make it way easier to figure out how to reverse engineer it, maybe make your own keys if there's a vulnerability in the locks, and if there is some sort of exploit that you can take advantage of, you're gonna be able to see it a lot more easily here. So say for example in our metaphor that, I don't know, every night for five minutes the cameras shut down for diagnostics. Well, if you didn't have access to the source code, you would never know that, but now that you have access to everything and how it's all built, that would be very obvious. So that's why it's super critical that this source code was released. It's not great for Apple, but it is good for people who might want to jailbreak their phones in the future. Another big deal is that the boot ROM, not iBoot, but the boot ROM is made so that you can only patch it via hardware updates. It's actually really secure because you can't modify it or anything, but that also means that if Apple wanted to modify it to fix something, well then, they have to wait until the next version of the iPhone hardware. And if there is something big that's hardware based, then they would have to hope that there's some sort of patch they could apply somewhere else software based that would fix it. Now, iBoot can be fixed with software, but again, that is a big deal that there's something hardware based that could be exploited that 
they really can't fix immediately. However, one important thing to know though is that this source code is not from the latest version of iOS. It's actually from iOS 9, so from a few years ago, although a lot of the code is surely still to be used. It's not like they rewrite everything every single year. And also, it's not like every single bit of iOS was leaked, and specifically, there are some files missing that does prevent this source code from being compiled. So some people on Reddit are saying that you need the internal SDK software development kit that Apple uses that would allow you to compile this. So it's not like they're gonna be able to do everything with this source code, but still, being able to have that source code is enough to be able to find some of these exploits. And exploits will be found. You can almost guarantee that because right now, people who wanted to jailbreak their phones, security researchers, just kind of had to poke around from the outside and hope they were able to dig in and find something that Apple didn't really account for. But for the most part, you had to be extremely skilled at this. But now, with the source code, that's gonna be a lot easier. And for jailbreakers, you know, they might come up with several different exploits that are available and say they want to jailbreak the latest version of iPhone, they could use that exploit this time and maybe keep several up their sleeve so they won't release every single exploit every year and then for years to come, there will be more and more jailbreaks. We don't know, depending on how many there are. Now, obviously, it's not a guarantee. I did say there will be exploits found, I'm sure there will, but you got to keep in mind that Apple does audit their own code. They do look for vulnerabilities, so it's just gonna be a matter of someone finding out things that they missed. But again, if people are able to find exploits when the code is not public, well, it's almost certain they will when it is. This could also potentially mean that in the future, people might be able to figure out how to run iOS on non-iOS and Apple devices, like emulators, or custom hardware, who knows? We'll have to wait and see exactly how this plays out. Now, like I said before, not everything was leaked, and even if it was, it's not like everything's gonna be vulnerable now. Most things will still be secure, even if it is public. For example, the boot ROM is read only. There's not really any way to get around that, which means that you're not really gonna be able to load custom ROMs or custom kernels like you might be able to do on Android devices that basically allow that to be open. And just as an example of this, take a look at AES encryption. That's open source. Everyone knows how encryption works and yet it's still secure because it doesn't rely on security through obscurity. It relies on just pure mathematics to be secure. So there's gonna be a lot of this where even if you know exactly how it works, you can't get into it. And just another example, I mean, look at Android. Most of that is open source as well. Not all of it, but some of it. And it's not like Android is super insecure as a result. So it's just gonna make things, again, easier to find vulnerabilities that weren't available before. Now, interestingly, apparently this leak, or at least part of it, was actually posted on Reddit several months ago, but no one really noticed possibly because the title of it was complete gibberish to anyone who didn't know what they were looking for. If they weren't a developer, they didn't know what this title meant. And also apparently that previous leak was only shared privately between certain developers. So this one is a little bit updated. It's not actually the same exact one, which is kind of interesting. In any case though, it does seem like jailbreaking is back on the menu, at least for a little while though it'll probably still be tethered jailbreaks. If you don't know what that means, basically an untethered jailbreak just means you can jailbreak your phone and it's jailbreak forever. You don't have to worry about reloading it, whereas tethered jailbreak means you have to jailbreak it every time you reboot your phone, which is kind of annoying. But I mean, how many times do you really reboot your phone? It's not that big of an inconvenience, but still, untethered jailbreaks are like the holy grail. That being said though, they are also way more difficult, especially with this secure enclave. And again, even if it is open source, it might still not be possible. So one question you might be still wondering is, is this good news? And that depends on who you are. If you're Apple, this is obviously very, very, very bad news. I mean, losing your source code is like the worst thing ever. I mean, that's like the worst thing you could possibly have leaked. So this means that Apple is gonna have a lot of worries about security specifically. I mean, you wonder why Apple hates jailbreaking so much. It's not really that people are making custom software, but mostly because if you can jailbreak software, that means that, well, malicious people could potentially load exploits for people who don't wanna voluntarily jailbreak their software. So that's why they're worried about it. 
Now, if you are someone who wants to jailbreak your iPhone, this is probably good news because that means it's a lot more likely that it will happen. But again, you know, it's a double-edged sword. We might even see, who knows, some potential security issues depending on how big exploits are found. Although again, that's not a guarantee. So overall, we are gonna just have to wait and see how this plays out. People aren't gonna figure things out immediately. And even if they do find exploits, they might never reveal them. They might keep it to themselves or release it over time. And me personally, I don't really care that much about jailbreaking. I'd rather just have the latest features and keep my iOS up to date. And if there is something, some feature that I really want, then I would probably just get it on Android where it's a lot more open. So you can let us know what you think down in the comments. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also be sure to enable notifications by clicking that bell next to the subscribe button. So thanks again for watching guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.